could this be the reason why Gino Jennings finds himself in hot water? Listen, folks, welcome back to The Rev, where we focus on revelation, awakening, revival, reformation, and revolution to transform society. In this special edition of the Sweet Hour of Prayer, we're going to be sharing this video. Shout out to the First Truth, Truth of God broadcast for allowing us to use this video. But we're going to see why Gino Jennings is in the situation that he's in. We're going to be reacting in the video as well, but we want to get your opinion after you watch this video. Here we go. This week. Yeah, man. Mm -hmm. And I know what he want to talk about. I know he want me to talk about TD Snakes, <laughs> but it's more going on in the world than that. That's right. Huh? That's right. Only thing I can do is uh, testify to what I see. I speak that which I what know. You, what you see. Okay, man, and I testify to what I see. What you see. All, the, all that other stuff that he's accused of, I don't know nothing about. Right. Now, he's about to go into stuff where some would say it's absolutely not necessary for him to do. But remember what he said. He said TD Snakes. Was that necessary? And we're going to see some more. I don't know whether he was doing the sloppy toppy. That's right. I don't know that. You don't know that. I don't know nothing about that. <laughs> I don't know that. That's right. I don't know. <laughs> Amen. I don't know who he was playing house was, with. I don't know. That's right. I know none of that. Right. But one thing I do know, I do know <laughs> that's right. that he was at Diddy's party mm -hmm. because he was dumb enough. They videotaped, they videotaped it. with shorts on, right. dancing, and his family dancing. That's right. He took a picture with Diddy. Diddy laid his hand, his head on him. My Lord. He did a sign language with Diddy. My Lord. He sat there at the table with a champagne glass there. Mm. So all I can do is speak what I know. What you know. All that other stuff. I heard he, he said that he's 68 years old. He's too old to be a freak. Brother, that's a lie. That's a lie. Am I right, man? That's right. <laughs> Go ahead, thank God. That's a lie. That's a lie. <laughs> Go ahead, thank God. Jakes, I want you to hear this. Amen. That's just a bold faced lie. That's right. Because 68, you're young. That's and right. that's not too old to be a freak. No. Anytime in the Bible, that's right. they are making babies at 300, yeah. 400, 500, 600, that's right. 700, and they're making babies. Making babies. Man, 68 years old, you ain't nothing but a baby compared to them in the Bible. That's right. So you're not too old. No. To be a freak. No, no. No way. No, that part was funny. Lie out of hell. That's right. Am I right, folks? Amen. Talk back to me. Amen. You 68 years old, you two old man. That's one of the biggest lies among your other lies. Among other lies. Hear me good. I'm going to make it so plain you have to get angry. That's right. <laughs> That's right. Like I said to the church the other day, that the black caucus of ministers wrote me three letters. They mm -hmm. wanted to make sure I get it, so they sent three big letters to the church with about three or four pages of a petition signed mm -hmm. by so many preachers in the country mm -hmm. to mediate, to have a meeting. Want to mediate between me and Jake the Snake. <laughs> I started to tear the letters up, mm -hmm. but I said, no. Ah, 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 ah. Now I'm going to use this time. If they're serious about coming to the table, right. I'm going to use this time, bring our ministers, some of our brothers, and we're going to strike this out with scripture. That's right. That's, that's, that's what we want to do. That's right. We want to strike this out with scripture. Amen. Prove the fact Prove it. that the church can coexist mm -hmm. with homosexuality. Right. 
Prove it. Prove it. Prove the fact that a man of God is evolving towards homosexuality. My Lord, my Lord. He said, some churches have their theory, uh, others have their theory. He said, I'm evolving. I'm not. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Until God evolved, ain't never evolved. That's right. He made the woman for the man. For the man. That's it. I will never evolve from that. That's right. That's right. Are you listening? That's right. Now keep this in mind. What it says in Colossians 4 and 6, let your speech be always with grace, seasoned with salt, that ye may know how ye ought to answer every man. He's got the what down, but how he comes across, could that be why he's in so much trouble? Let's continue. Amen. So I started to tie the letters up, but I changed my mind. I talked to Dan early in the week. I say, yeah, call them. Mm -hmm. let's, let's come to the table. Let's, let's strike this out with Bible. That's right. I mean, if the black caucus get wrong, then I'll get a hold of them with the Bible. That's right. I don't care who you are. Pastor Amen. Jennings don't care what degrees you hold. I don't care what college you went to. That's right. I don't care how popular you are. That's right. Anybody from the black caucus side with homosexuality, I take God's word and beat you asunder like anybody else. That's right. Amen. You get what I'm talking? Amen. Go ahead, man. I often think of the scripture where the Lord asks the question, who will stand up who for me? Who will stand for me? Who will? That's right. Somebody in the earth, hallelujah, hallelujah, had to stand up for God. That's right. Who's not swayed by money and popularity and notoriety, but just stand up, That's right. flat footed for God. That's right. Go ahead. Brother. You preachers are an embarrassment. Yes. Oh, yeah. You are a disgrace to God's word. That's right. You, your wives, and everything else. Amen. Amen. You have no respect for God, and you just play church. Put playing. And the followers been participating in this Sesame Street version of church That's for right. so long. That's right. Until they accept it as God's anointing. That's right. Sesame Street version of church got Big Bird for bishops and Grover for elders and amen, snuffle up against for deacons. <laughs> That's right. And Oscar from the trash can on the mother's board. Amen. Amen. What did the Jew tell us? For there are certain men crept certain in men. unawares. Glory to God, they crept in unawares. Who were before of old ordained to this condemnation. They were ordained to this common condemnation, ungodly men. Turning the grace of our... And so, there you have it. There you have it. And then he continues on uh, with Jude and he continues preaching from the Bible. But... We want to make sure that when we speak the truth, that we speak the truth in love. This feud that is between these two brothers, Brother Jakes and Brother Jennings, I believe it is a feud that was never in the will of God. Remember, remember how we are to answer people, how we are to answer. I know plenty of you know what to answer, but what we need to work on now is how to answer. Let me show you just a little bit of what Jake said. Now, notice how Jake's, before we get into this video, notice how Jake's speaks and then compare that or contrast that with Pastor Gino Jennings. I want you to listen very closely to this. Good friends can say tough things to you because they care enough about you to critique you, to say, you know, I, I know you're insecure. I know you went through some changes, but man, you're driving me nuts today. In fact, I think that people who really love you will invest at the risk of falling out with you to tell you the truth. The sign of an imposter is somebody who always says what you want to hear. 
Many, many, many businesses, companies fall, families fall, churches fall because nobody has the nerve to say the tough things that need to be said to the person that it needs to be said to. Criticism is a very important thing. I, I believe on, on staff, in the ministry, in the church, criticism that goes up to somebody who can do something about it is better than criticism that goes bilaterally or goes down. That's complaining. Complaining and bickering is not productive. But there are some times that you need to be able to say something to somebody who can do something in a discreet way that brings about a change. You know, it doesn't mean you're a Judas because you don't agree with everything. All criticism is not bad, just like flattery is not always a sign that things are good. I hate to tell you this, but people who speak well of you all the time, you cannot trust that they like you. This is such a strange paradoxical situation that, that Jesus often rebukes people that I would have thought he would have embraced and he embraces people that I thought he should rebuke. He, he, when Peter says, uh, you can't take the Lord, he rebukes him and says, get thee hence behind me. When Judas comes to betray him, he calls him friend. Sometimes you cannot evaluate who a person is by the message they bring. The fact that they bring something that is negative or hard to hear does not mean that they don't love you. It could mean that they're making an investment in your destiny and that they care enough to risk your disdain to confront you with the truth. I don't think it's productive when you talk about people. You can't, you can't try to help me by talking about me. So totally different to talk to the person as opposed to talking about them. But all of us live in a world that we have to deal with criticism. And even amongst those who criticize us with evil intent, there may be something that you can learn from the criticism that will sharpen you and make you better. Oh, what a difference, right? <laughs> oh, what a difference between his message, how he communicated and how Pastor Jennings communicated. It didn't really seem like Pastor Jennings was trying to persuade that brother when he was up there in the pulpit, did it? it he actually sounds, now to some, to some he may actually sound like a bully, not really like someone who was trying to persuade that brother to get out of that falseness that he was in or, or whatever change he thinks T.D. Jakes needs to make. And so now I want you to see what he said, what Pastor Gino Jennings said back in the day about T.D. Jakes again. Okay, watch this. Notice every television preacher before they get off the air, they never leave without asking you for money. That's right. Every last one of them. Amen. We are the only program that you have seen ain't never asked you for a dime. That's right. Never. That's right. And it isn't because we're rich. Amen. We ain't rich. No. Rich men don't come in a place like this. No, no. That's rich men get a stadium. That's right. That's don't right. you know when TDJ's come in town, most time he's paid money in advance. Oh, yeah. Did he let him know about that? Did Pastor Jennings let Pastor Jakes know about what he's talking to him about right now? Before he come. Amen. 50 and 70 and 60 thousand dollars that's right and then get a cut off the tickets at the door that's right and then get the cut from the offering, the offering. And you sitting there Ooh, that's god man he's a religious carpet bag that's right that's right he's a carpet bagger yeah. go ahead when I look at the Bible, the Bible says come without money right. and without price. That's Don't right. misunderstand me. Yes, it takes money to run anything, but I ain't got that lie to get it out of you. That's right. We appreciate the boldness of both of these brothers. But what I think is needed in the body of Christ today is more of an understanding. Didn't Solomon say in all you're getting, get an understanding. And brother, I sure do hope that you went to T.D. Jakes before the cameras. You see, the, the bottom line is these men are still big men. Oh, yes. God still increased these men. 
Mm-hmm. And they don't need to talk about one another. <laughs> Listen, we all of mankind has one enemy. Okay, and we know that enemy is. And many times it's ourselves. So what we need to do is actually team up. Let's get together on what we can agree about, which better be Jesus Christ is Lord. You better have believed on the Lord Jesus Christ. You better have believed that God raised him from the dead and then confess him as Lord out with your mouth. Why? Because believing in the heart You believe on the heart to righteousness and you confess with your mouth unto salvation. Brother, if we have that in common, then the Holy Ghost will take care of the rest. God bless each and every one of you. Let me know what your feedback is. Do you like the way Pastor Jennings comes across? Do you like the way Pastor Jakes comes across? What are the pros? What are the cons? Let's get this thing worked out because let's not let the world see the church fighting. Didn't Jesus say that you'll know the world will know that you're my disciples for the love that you have one toward another? God bless you. God loves you. God smiles when he sees you.